Hi! Welcome to the Dairy Hour Podcast, where rural charm meets personal growth. Join us as we milk every moment for wisdom, self-improvement, and mental wellness. I'm your host, Val Levine, a rural dairy farming mom with a passion for filling hearts while never forgetting to fill my own cup. Get ready for insightful conversations, empowering tips, and a splash of fun and laughs, of course. Let's cultivate growth, nourish our minds, and embrace the journey together. This is the Dairy Hour Podcast, where every episode is a breath of fresh air and the inspiration you need to be your best self. So I am your host, Val Levine, and I am joined with a special guest today, Krista Paffrath. She is a fantastic person, and I've been really blessed to get to know her over the past, oh, year, year and a half, and I've really enjoyed my time working with her personally and also getting to know her a little bit more on like a friend level. So it's been great. Krista, how are you today? I am wonderful, Val. I have been looking forward to this all week. When you asked me to be on the podcast, I I couldn't say no. And I absolutely feel the same way. It's been great getting to know you both through coaching and like you said, also on a on a more personal friend level. So I'm just thrilled to be here. Awesome. And I am really excited to hear about your journey as an entrepreneur and also the different things that you do to keep yourself, um, you know, in the right mental headspace, because especially working for yourself, as a lot of you all know, can be very mentally taxing. So it's really important to make sure that you're staying in that proper mental headspace, keeping your creativity flowing and doing all the things. So let's get started. Krista, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I have, I like to tell people that I have been an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember. I, from a very young age, I had to pay for all of my own everything. I had horses. I had a truck that I had to gas up. Um, I paid for the insurance. I paid for my horse's feet to get done all of this at the time when I was just 16 years old. And I mean, at that age, it's not like you can just walk into any any job and, you know, get a job. A lot of places won't hire at 16. So I had to figure out a way to make money. And I started by giving horseback riding lessons in my backyard. Um, and I did that for years. I did that to make the money that I needed to pay for my horses and my truck. Um, that love for entrepreneurism really stuck around. It didn't really go anywhere. I did try the normal route of, I worked at a bank for a couple months. I worked at a coffee shop. Like I did some different things, but that itch never really went away. And it took me a long time to a learn to accept it as a strength and not a weakness But then it also took me a long time to really fully settle into like what my purpose was in that, um, in that my journey was my own and my journey didn't need to look like anybody else's. Um, So from giving horseback riding lessons in my backyard, I, in 2016, launched my first official business. Um, It was a social media marketing company for brick and mortar businesses in my local area. And I just, I, I've realized, A, that I can make a difference in these small businesses' worlds in their own journey. And I loved that. And I did so well. I like had 10 clients right off the bat, but I did it for about three years and I went really hard for three years. I was in that hustle mode. I was like 21. I was hungry. I was ready for it. And I burned out. Like, so fast. Like it hit me like a freight train. And I just, I remember thinking to myself, like, I can't do this anymore. And I went from loving social media and loving working with clients to literally having so much anxiety on my chest every day that it, it, it hurt me to get out of bed. Like I didn't know what else I was going to do. Um, so I kind of shifted some things. I started like a co- partnership business with another, um, with a couple other entrepreneurs to try and work in some different variety into what I was doing. And I scaled back some of my clients, but I just never fully was able to recover from that burnout. 
Um, and eventually I just stopped both of my businesses altogether. And I ended up working for a company in the Western lifestyle industry. Um, and I just wrote stories, which was another whole part of my journey, but I did that for about four years. And then I was connected to um, a blogger in the dairy industry to do some of her marketing for her. And that kind of just snowballed. And I realized, A, working for clients who had the same values and morals as me was a game changer. Um, no longer was I fighting those feelings of burnout because I knew the clients that I was working for valued the work that I was doing. Hopefully that didn't sound redundant, but um, it made all the difference no, that in the makes world sense. working for people that understood what I was doing. So, um, and that was it. I mean, after that, it, my third business took off. All of a sudden I had three or four clients and that has slowly morphed into me launching the Rural Podcast Network last November. So that is like it in a very, like the smallest nutshell that I could put it in. Um, that is my entrepreneurship story in a short, in a short way. <laughs> That sounds like me trying to explain all of the different things that I do. Well, I do this and I do this. And then sometimes I do this and I get that. Um, I too, and I prefer to work for myself and do my own thing. It makes, makes me ha a happier person. So that's always great. And um, I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy to be a part of the Rural Podcast Network. Shout out to the Rural Podcast Network, of course. And I believe you also just last week relaunched your own podcast. If you want to give that a little shout out. Yeah, I did. I actually so knew I keep forgetting about it. Um, so it's called Women Going Big, and it is sharing stories of women going big in their personal and professional lives, regardless of what kind of walk of life they come from. Um, and so much like Val, I'm sharing inspiring, empowering stories of women going big. And I go live every every Thursday I release new episodes. So if you want to check it out, we're on Instagram under women going big. So you can, you can tune in wherever you get awesome. podcasts. Thanks Val. Awesome. Of course. And so obviously like we've alluded to before, balancing that mindset with entrepreneurship is just so challenging. So like what different things do you do to help maintain that positive mindset uh, while navigating through life in general. Yeah. Um, I saw a quote, I think it was last week or the week before, where it said, if people knew half of what an entrepreneur was faced with daily, they they would be astounded at the amount of stress that our decisions carry. And a lot of us have employees or contractors that rely on us for for payment to, to put food on the table for them. Um, and I don't think that I fully understood that stress and what it can do to your body if you let it fester, like if you don't take care of that. Um, and again, I mentioned the burnout that I experienced early on in my entrepreneurship career, and I didn't realize that that was even a thing. So when it hit me, I had no idea what was going on. Um, and so this time around, starting not only the Royal Podcast Network, uh, but also just still managing some marketing clients is I realized that I had to put myself first, which was so, so hard coming from somebody that's very mm, like, I don't want to say client serving, but I'm, I'm a very service based person. Um, I will give you the shirt off my back and I will, I almost always put other people first besides myself. Um, mm -hmm. So some of the things that I incorporate these days into my business to make sure I'm taking care of myself is I prioritize yoga and moving my body. Yoga has been an absolute game changer for me, not only as a physical way to exert like stress and energy in my body, but also from like a mental standpoint, I have so much clarity during my day, like I'm able to think clearly. I'm, you know, like there's just, I feel like so much more space in my head, which sounds funny to maybe somebody that isn't an entrepreneur listening. But um, as women, I think we have so many things going on in our heads all the time and it just slows everything down. So um, yoga has been the number one thing. Uh, the second thing actually that I'm working on 
recent, like in the last, I would say two months or so is incorporating a meditation practice at home. Um, and it's so funny because a lot of people think meditation is sitting and trying to turn your brain off. Um, when in actuality, it is sitting and just listening and watching the thoughts in your head go by. Um, the best way that I like to think about it is if you envision a waterfall and there's like a little outcropping under the waterfall where you can sit and just watch the water go past, that is what meditation is. And the waterfall is your thoughts. Um, so again, I like it's that. Figuring I like out a way that to slow down. description of it. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I visualize, right? Because when you can see it in your head and you envision your thoughts being that waterfall and you just watch them go by, you're not latching on to them. And Val, I know we've connected with this before, but like I have ADHD and it's mm -hmm. really, really easy for me to latch on to something and then spiral with it. Like I will go down the rabbit hole even if I'm not trying to. Yeah. Um, yeah. so being able to separate and give myself some space from my own thoughts has been critical for me. Um, and again, maybe it's, it's me with my ADHD, but not letting my mind run my actions is that's something that I have to monitor like every minute of every day. So I would say yoga and meditation have the bit, have been like the biggest two for me. I could probably talk for like an hour on things that I do to make my day easier, but. Hey, got to start somewhere, right? And I definitely, I mean, I actually tried yoga through our gym for the first time. One of my friends that goes there, she's also trained, she's a trained yoga instructor and they did like a mm -hmm. specialty yoga camp session, whatever you want to call it. And I've never slow it's hard for me as a go 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 person to sit down and like be intentional with my movement and like hold still and I mean some of you that know me be quiet is another like one of those things where it's just like that was it took a lot of focus but after I felt so refreshed and rejuvenated it was really cool I uh, definitely want to try doing a little bit more yoga in the future um but I'm also going to stick to my high paced gym environment because that's what keeps me going. So, um, so what are some of the different unique challenges? You know, you're fairly rural also. What are some of the challenges that come with being a rural entrepreneur? Um, I would say in this, even for me recently has been a big challenge is connecting with people locally. Um, all of my clients are across the country. I have clients in Ohio. I have clients in Texas. I have clients, uh, I mean, in, in New York. York. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have clients all over the country, but I don't have anybody here locally. Um, a, like I have a couple very, very good friends here. Um, but I don't have anybody until recently that was specific in ag, that understood the importance of teaching people where our food comes from or um, being connected to even farmers and ranchers here in Arizona. Like, I just didn't have that connection. Um, wow. Thankfully, last week, I'm really excited. I actually was invited to our local Women's Farm Bureau social. Um, and I don't know, Arizona, agriculture in Arizona is really funny because we're really spread out. Um, it's not yeah. like there's little pockets, you know, where it's here and there and everywhere kind of deal. I mean, I just didn't know where to go for anything. Yeah. I, I I just didn't know. I didn't even know we had a women's leadership chapter of Farm Bureau. Um, so it was just kind of by chance. But I would say that has been my biggest struggle up until now is finding people to connect with that understand the stories that I'm trying to share. Definitely. Um, and that would definitely be a struggle and also feeling isolated. I mean, if your people that you're connecting with all the time are nowhere near you, that definitely can take a toll on that, you know, human interaction portion of being an entrepreneur. So I definitely understand where that's coming from. So, you know, can you just discuss, I mean, you've already touched on it a little bit, the importance of like self-balance and, you know, being an entrepreneur, um, how you manage all that. Yeah. 
Um, so I think for me, it's so I had mentioned my yoga and my meditation practice earlier, but for me, it's being aware of where I'm at in my headspace. Um, and this, I think, maybe is growth and just managing like my ADHD. But, you know, it's it's when I start to feel a couple of different things. One of them is overstimulated. Um, and for us, that can happen physically. It can happen emotionally, uh, mentally. So being aware for me of like what my signs are is like when I start for me, it's like when I start to feel that like if I have like one little thing and it could be, I mean, it, it could be the stupidest of things, right? It could be like my dog's barking at the mailman. It could be um, my car not starting. It could be something so small. But if I feel like that one small thing is going to send me over the edge into like an ADHD rage or like if, if I just don't feel, I don't want to use the word stable because that makes me sound crazy. Um, but I mean, like if I, I just feel mean. like that my cup is so, if my cup is so full that I can't handle another thing, that's mm -hmm. when I know that I need to take a step back. I need to reevaluate the things that are on my plate and figure out what is my pri like what do I absolutely have to get done and what can wait because I need to take care of myself whether that's taking a break and reading a book that is not productive or having an at-home yoga practice or meditating and sometimes like my mind is so wrapped up that it's like I can sit down and, and meditate but like it's really just me mm, trying to come down from that overstimulation um, and I work from home, so it isn't like I have somebody here that I can just like talk to and talk through these yeah. things. So naturally already I'm working inside my own head all day. Like it is just me and my three dogs at home. Um, and that already, like you had mentioned earlier, it doesn't do a lot of great things for like your mental health. Um, so yeah, I think just knowing when I'm getting to that point where I need to take a break has been critical. Um, yeah. And then, like, preventative, like, before I even get to that, is, like, what can I do to create more space, again, in my head to where I don't even get to that level? And it is. It's taking lots of breaks. It's making sure that I'm getting enough protein during the day. Um, you know, what can I do to kind of keep myself at an even keel all day rather than seeing that really big fluctuating um, in my mental load? So. Yes, finding that balance and being self-aware is so important to know. It takes a lot to go through and, you know, they say it's hard to get to know other people, but really, I think the challenge lies within getting to know yourself because a lot of people will juggle their way through life and they don't step out of their bodies and look and get to know themselves and become aware of what those situations are that you know, send you, like you said, spiraling into something different, um, keep you grounded, all of those different things. So uh, definitely getting to know yourself is a huge part of, you know, especially being by yourself and knowing your limits and all your different little, uh, not, quirks. you know what I mean? Like the different little uh, yeah. quir quirks. I like that. That's what I always say my horse is. He's very quirky. So yeah. I, I know his quirks yeah. and I'm working on knowing my own quirks. And well, and I yeah. like what you said too um, about, um, oh, sorry. I think there's a little bit of a lag. Oh, you're good. Um, yeah, I like what you said too about people, a lot of people not stepping outside of themselves and getting to know themselves. Um, that's something that I, I like, I don't want to say preach, but it's something that I talk about a lot because I don't know how I could go through my life, like just like in tunnel vision, pretending that there aren't reasons for things happening, right? Like being angry for no reason or burning out for no reason. Like I like to be aware of like what's going on in my head and my body to prevent those things from happening. Um, I can't imagine somebody just going through life being like, oh, it's just, just because it happens. Like it just, this happens and I don't know why and I don't really care why. I'm like, how, like, how do you not care about that? So I love that. Yes. I agree with that because I am not one of those people. It takes a lot of focus for me to like 
let things go and just be like, it's just the way it is. It's nothing against you. Like, it's okay. It's fine. Just step back. Do what you can do. There's only so many things you can control. And that, to me, is a huge part of keeping myself on the straight and narrow is, like, teaching myself that it's okay if something doesn't go exactly to plan. Like, we can just let it go and move along with it and, you know, learn to pivot and go with the flow. That's, it's been a long journey and I'm definitely gaining on it, which I'm happy to be gaining on it, but it's, it's a, it's a lot of work. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, or even, you know, like you were saying, just your mind is constantly going, constantly going. And I talked to my husband and I'm like, Oh, what are you thinking? This is my, my famous question. What, what's on your mind? What are you thinking? And he's like, nothing. And I'm like, no, there can't not be anything on your mind. Like how does one just have nothing on their mind? So I, um, yeah, yeah, I feel that. So, you know, while we're on the conversation of focus, so what different strategies do you stay, uh, do you use to stay motivated, stay focused and, you know, get those goals taken care of that you have for your personal, your personal life and your business? Yeah. Um, so for me, and it took me a really long time and actually my journal is on the other side of the counter here, but, um, I wanted to be a journal girly so bad, like for a long time, I was the girl that had like the five almost empty journals going on at the same time because I love journals, but I never had a journaling practice. Um, and then I, I don't know what it was really, truly. I think that I just decided that I needed a morning routine um, to get me kind of focused and grounded in the morning. Uh, mornings are like my most productive time. I would say like mid morning, early afternoon are my most productive times. So getting up and making sure that I'm getting out of bed and doing something and not just going right into work. Um, again, it's creating that space in my brain to be able to navigate my different tasks throughout the day and not be working from a stage of overwhelm and be working from a place of focus and clarity. Um, so getting up and having a morning routine has been like so, so important for me. Um, and I journal, so I write like one, mm, like manifestation or like one, um, like for instance, like today I wrote, today is a beautiful day. Um, so I write like one positive thing that I believe to be true about today. Um, and then I write three things that I'm grateful for. And sometimes like most times, like they overlap. So, you know, I write that I'm thankful for my husband several times a week, um, or the house that we're living in, or, you know, whatever the case may be, but being specific in those things that you're grateful for. Um, and then just reading. So right now I'm reading actually two books kind of in tandem. Um, I'm reading a book on meditation and I'm reading a book on having courage. Um, and somehow they go together very well. And I'm not sure because they're by two totally different authors, but the content is just, it works for both of them. So I read a chapter in each one of those every morning. Um, I don't know what will happen when I finish these books. I might find like just another easy um, kind of semi-productive book, but nothing that's too heavy in the morning for me. Um, so, yeah, and then I have this. So anybody with ADHD knows I'm a big list person. I don't know about anybody else, but we have to have, I know you like to have things written down. Um, this is the only thing that works for me. I have tried bullet journals. I have tried dated calendars. Uh, you name it. I have absolutely tried it. And this is the only thing that works for me um, because I can see my entire week laid out. I know what's coming. I can write all my appointments down. I have notes. Um, it's structured and yet not structured at the same time. So I would say between having a morning routine and then being able to see my entire week laid out, laid out in one place is mm -hmm. is super super important for me to stay focused and and kind of on task i too am a list maker except sometimes i end up with multiple lists and then just life goes crazy but then i upgraded the other day to a larger notepad i don't know if that was a good thing or a mm -hmm. bad thing but boy can i scribble some stuff down on there 
or it just ends up with random stuff on it. If something just randomly pops into my head and I was like, oh, I want to hang on to that. So I write it down. So I'm not worried about holding on to it, but it's there and I can go back and visit it when I feel like it's the right time to visit that. But I'm definitely a, if it does not get written down, it does not get done kind of person. And I mean, I can have days where I just wander around and I don't get anything done. And it's because I don't have, if I don't take the time, the 10 minutes that I need to write down a list, I just wander aimlessly and do whatever I think needs to be done. And then I'm like, oh no, I completely forgot about this and that. And oh, and now I need to scramble to get that done. So I, I feel the calendar and actually on our fridge, we have important meetings and stuff like that on a calendar just so that you know, everyone kind of knows what's going on. And my husband still says, well, I didn't know that was coming. And I'm like, well, it was on the calendar. Well, I don't look at that. And I was like, how can you go without looking at the calendar? Like, it is funny they just how life. we can be so opposite. Yeah, I, you no. Know, he just counts on, he does his day-to-day -day thing and counts on me to tell him anything important. And then, you know, does the husband thing of, you didn't say that. I'm like, no, I 100% told you that. So, but hey. It's married life and it's wonderful. So we're going with it. Mm -hmm. um, so as a woman in rural entrepreneurship, have you encountered anything, you know, difficult about that? Or do you not see too much of a difference? Um, because I work mostly remotely um, and I work with, I literally only work with people that A, align with like myself and my values um I don't come across a whole lot of that um now again I would imagine it would be different if I was like on a farm or a ranch um at a, there was a time that I was working in rodeos a lot and I was mm -hmm. dealing with committee members who were three times my age um and I would say when I was doing that kind of work there were some stereotypes of like, first, I was a woman, and being a woman in a production role in rodeo isn't really mm -hmm. a thing. Um, so I dealt a little bit with that, but I've kind of moved away from that. So I don't experience that a yep. ton now. But um, it's amazing when you have your own business, you get to work with people like whoever you want. And if you don't vibe with somebody, you can you can fire them. And thankfully, yep. I've never had to fire a client, but. Well, that's good. Don't fire me, okay? <laughs> no. Oh, Chris, I, I really, Chris normally, I trust my gut. Yeah, normally at this point, I trust my gut, and I usually get a gut feeling before I even work with the person. Um, so, and I usually cut it off before it even starts. But no, I Perfect. only work with the best. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. No. Um, you're just good at keeping me from being too scrambled. Sometimes, sometimes they get a get away That's from what I'm you. Here but... for. <laughs> it's the gentle. Maybe we should work on this. I'm like, oh, Krista thinks this is important. We better flag this and get it done. Um, so, yes. Um, it's like her. I'm like herding cats sometimes, and I love it. But sometimes it gets a little exhausting. Uh, so, what you advice what? would you I'm give to other women? Because I'm also a cat. Perfect. It's like herding cats. <laughs> Yeah, that help. It helps, though, because you know what to expect. You're like, she's probably going to do this when she should be doing this. But we're going to just try to steer her and maybe, you know, open the can of cat food over here and hope she heads to that corner. Yep. Someday we'll get there. But it's a work in progress, as always. Uh, so what advice would you give to other women looking to pursue an entrepreneur entrepreneurship? There we go. Uh, in rural areas while maintaining a positive mindset and being able to put themselves first because, you know, like you said earlier, it's hard. It's hard to be super productive and, you know, you get away from each other or you get away from yourself and just want to cater to everyone else and forget about yourself. And that's something that really people need to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. And I think for me is being really clear in, like what you want to do and why you want to do it. Um, so for me at this point, like it is 
like I know there's no going back. Like I could not go back to a nine to five job at this point. I'm almost 10 years into, um, you know, being an entrepreneur. And for me, it's about, I don't want to just say financial freedom, but just like lifestyle freedom. Like I want to be able to Mm -hmm. go to a 10 o'clock yoga class in the middle of the day. Um, and it, you know, the same thing, like I don't have kids yet, but like when I do start having kids, like I want to be able to make sure that I'm home with them. Um, so having that lifestyle freedom that comes with entrepreneurship is my why. So I think for Mm -hmm. other women, it's knowing why you want to go into entrepreneurship. Um, and then knowing, knowing that it is going to become a part of you that you have to manage. Um, you have to make time for it just like anything else. Um, like set aside time in your day to work on your business, um, and work in your business. So I think that's like one of the biggest things because a lot of times people are like, oh, I could just, I could just jump into this. Like, it's going to be really easy. I'll just do it on the side. If you go into it thinking that you're just going to do it on the side, you're never going to make any headway. Um, and again, I, I assume this is going to be very different for women with kids at home. Um, but it's going to be the same thing. Like plan on having some playtime where the kids are in a little kid corral playing with their toys and you are working on your business or have somebody mm-hmm. come over and watch the kids so that you can, you know, do your business. Um, you know, so figuring out ways that you can schedule time to work on your business is critical. And then the other thing, just know that you're not going to get there overnight. I am eight, nine years into this, and I am still not, A, it's it never goes where you think it's going to go. Um, so never have, I, I say like always have goals and be working towards something, but also be open to where the journey takes you because you just never know what doors it's going to open. Mm-hmm. Um, so being flexible in that. Um, and not being overly strict about what your expectations are to get out of it uh, because it could change and your why can change and your purpose can change. So being flexible in that and just letting entrepreneurship take you where it needs to go or where you need to go, I think is the other thing. So the two biggest takeaways, make sure you have a schedule to fit it in and then be open to where it takes you. I like, I love both of those pieces of advice. I have definitely learned the whole take different doors, not necessarily the way you think you're going to go. Sometimes life brings you in an unexpected spot where you are actually happier than you would have been where you thought you were going. And I think even with my, you know, my, you know, mental health mindset, things like if you said a few years ago when I just started doing stuff on social media and then eventually I was like oh I'm gonna do a podcast if you had said this is where you're gonna end up talking to people about how they become the best version of themselves in a rural type environment I would have thought you were crazy and come to find out I was not in my best mindset headspace either And that journey has been so eye-opening for me. And now I'm like, now that I'm starting to be more in my happier place, it's so much more rewarding to help people, you know, find ways that help them be in their best mental headspace as well. I don't know if that's like the right term, but mindset, as far as that goes, just helping people hone in on that and be able to encourage them to be their best selves and not, you know, shrink down just because someone else near them is too big for their own britches and that, you know, you know, whoever you are, your happiness is most important. And sometimes that takes severing different relationships or doing something different, mixing it up. Sometimes a huge disruptive event is what you need to basically wipe the slate somewhat clean and be able to start anew and build those new blocks because you can't build a good house on a bad foundation. And that to me is so important. 
But if you ever asked me if this is where I was going to end up, I would tell you you were crazy. So here we are. Um, I love that. So Krista, do you have any final words of advice on entrepreneurship for people before we get into the more fun part of the podcast? Mm, I think my other piece is like, don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Um, this also took me a really long time to accept and lean into is every quarter now for me as I plan, um, I plan to invest in myself, whether that's through coaching or I take a course or um, I invest in some resources, like whatever it is I set aside in my budget every quarter for me to invest time in myself and my business because you need to constantly be growing. You need to constantly be learning new information, connecting with new people, you know, so whether it's a mastermind or, um, you know, buying a like a, a guide or a course or whatever that is. Like, I think that continually investing yourself is really, really underrated. Um, and people, I think people forget that when you have a business, it's a write-off. Like all of mm -hmm. that stuff you can write off. If it's a coach, you can write it off. And I'm not, this is not legal advice, but <laughs> I am not a tax, like I write tax lady. all of my investments off. Yeah, not a tax professional, but um, as long as you have all your paperwork done, uh, with your like LLC and stuff, it is most definitely tax write off. So, um, yeah, I guess that's my other thing is just don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Definitely. Um, I love approaching life with the, you never stop learning, never stop trying to learn and never stop seeking those paths of education because not only is it a great investment in yourself, but it also helps keep your mind sharp and, you know, sometimes new ideas, fresh slate, different different uh, viewpoints of things, they come in really handy and you never know where they're going to take you. So I think that definitely ties back to the doors open thing for you as well that you were talking about. So uh, yeah, so now absolutely. I like to get now I like to get into the rapid fire questions. Um, of course, this new software has a little bit of a lag, so bear with us. Hopefully everything comes out good in the in the final products. So bear with us. Um, so Krista, are you, well, you're from Arizona, beach or mountains? Mountains. Mountains. See, I, I guess you probably get enough sand. I don't know if it's super sandy where are you, where you are, but. Well, I just I, don't, uh... I just don't see the beach very often. Like it's so far away. Like it's, it's five hours minimum for me to get to a beach in either direction, sometimes longer. Um, so I just see and enjoy mountains so much more because I see them more. So that makes sense. Uh, your dream <laughs> vacation spot. Uh, the very first thing that comes to mind is Greece. Ooh, I, I saw you as a, Gr Which like, I beach. can see that. That doesn't make sense. But there. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of other things there besides the beach, but I get that. Um, let's see, you are, I'm trying to think of some good ones for you. What's your go-to like hype song? Oh, okay. Well, since we're going there, um, I just have we're to admit there. to everybody, I am, I'm a Swifty. I'm not afraid to admit it, but I was an OG Swifty. Okay. Back in like 2013 when she came out with teardrops on my guitar okay so og swifter here um but, but my current hold on I, hold on hold on i'm gonna ruin this for you Oop. i'm gonna ruin this for you krista it was before 2013 that she came out with that song oh, was because it? i was a freshman in college sure so we're talking 2009 or no 2006 here 2006 2007 okay. so i just had to throw that yeah, out there that's even better. That means it was even older than that. So we're talking 15 plus years ago. So I feel like I'm allowed to be a Swifty if I'd listened to her back then. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, though. Um, that makes me feel better. Uh, let's see. Um, right now, my favorite song by hers is off of her new album. And um, it's Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. 
I haven't heard it yet, but I will have to listen. And if you hadn't you need to it's good. clicked on to that, obviously I'm an OG Swifty from way back and I kind of lost touch with her in the middle and I came back around now, but I haven't listened to the new album yet. So I'm not like crazy, crazy Swifty, but I'm there. And my kids really thought it was odd when they started to like be like, oh, yes, I love listening to Taylor Swift at school. And then they're like, mom, will you play this song? And I'm like, yep. And then I can sing every word to it. And they're just like, how do you know? I was like, because I'm smart like that. that. Yeah. And I've been listening mm -hmm. to Taylor Swift and this song since before you were born. So here we are, kids. Like, take that. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Yep. yep um, exactly. One more. What is your go-to comfort meal? Hmm. You're okay, welcome. It's I'll make sound you hungry. So cheesy. I might be. I might. This like makes me a total child at heart, or maybe just a child. Um, I love a good box of shells and cheese, like the Velveeta kind. Okay. I don't think it gets any cozier than a whole bowl of Velveeta shells and cheese. I mean, yeah, we do Cabot mac and cheese here <laughs> in in this mm. New York Cabot household. But I, I feel the like, and we, we do, we make our mac and cheese from scratch sometimes, but sometimes nothing beats just the boxed, like simple, away we go. Yep. I'm on board with that. Yeah. So, and I love to ask a question of you that's kind of a little bit deeper and something that a previous guest on the podcast left for a future guest. And your oh, question right. is, if you are going if you want to be remembered for one thing what is that thing that you want to be remembered for wow um this is a wonderful question um the very first thing that comes questions. to mind yeah um the very first thing that comes to mind is like i hope that i leave behind a legacy of kindness um, like, I hope that when people think about working with me or what I've built or the projects that I've done, like, I hope that people were just like thinking that I was like, I was so kind and that I was kind in my actions and not that everything I do is for everybody else, but I hope that my actions lead to the kindness of others and promoting that sense of kindness. So that's the first thing that came up. And that's, I think that's the first time I've ever been asked that question. So I love that. Perfect. I'm here for it. And um, I also didn't warn you about this, so you're welcome. But um, what is, you know, <laughs> do you have a go-to favorite quote that drives you to be the best that you can be? Uh, my favorite quote lately has been in this book that I'm reading and You'll hear it if you listen to my podcast. Um, I talk about it a lot in there. But it it's really easy. It's going to blow you away how easy this is. If not you, then who? And essentially, like, what that means is if you don't take hold of the power in you, who will? If you mm -hmm. don't launch that business or that event or that podcast or that blog, who else will? And it's just to say that your unique power in your purpose is not anybody else's. So anything that you do is going to be unique to you and you should do it because nobody else is going to do it like you can. I like that a lot. That's a great way to finish up the podcast. I, you, you really knocked it out of the park with that one. And I actually, I think I've heard that before, but it didn't, um, it's starting to resonate more that I've heard it a couple times now and it definitely holds true. And I love that. So, uh, Krista, if anyone is looking to connect with you, how can they do so? Um, so I am on all of the social medias, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, mainly, um, under Krista Paffrath. I think I'm actually Krista Kaufman on my personal Facebook. Um, so I will, and Pathrath is a bear to spell. So I will just make sure to give those links to Val to put in the show notes. Um, I've got them. And I've got them. if you want to check out the podcast, 
<laughs> it's women going big on Instagram and anywhere you find your podcasts. And then the Rural Podcast Network is the Rural Podcast Network on Instagram as well. So perfect. Uh, so Krista, I want to thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys, the listeners have really gained some tidbits of wisdom from Krista because she is wise beyond her years. And I've really enjoyed getting to know her and I look forward to getting to know her even more in the future. So I hope you all have a great day and we will talk to you next week.